This is the MDT LRA electronic level. And if you're in a long range shooting and you like to make more impacts and miss less, you might wanna watch this video. Let's get into it. Hey folks, Gary here with Paramount Tactical, your source for guns, gear, training, and tactics. It's all brought to you by Real World Experience. So in today's video, we are gonna be going over this MDT electronic level, but more importantly, or just as importantly, we're gonna talk about why it is so critical that if you're doing any sort of long range shooting, you've got to be shooting with an anti-cant device. And I can tell you right now, this is the absolute best option, in my opinion, that I have ever seen, and, and we'll talk about that. We're gonna go over the features of it. We're gonna go over the, all the different options that this that is available with this as far as mounting options and things like that, and just make sure that you're an informed buyer. But I will ask that at the end of this, you decide you want one of these. Folks, we are an MDT dealer, and I would really appreciate if you purchase from us. That's what supports this channel, and we wanna bring you the best gear possible. And after a lot of research and a lot of testing, but I think you're really gonna be impressed with what this device does and how it can help you be a better shooter. So, you know, for those of you that don't know, folks, it is critical that when you are shooting at distance, especially at all distances, but especially, you know, 300 yards and beyond, and definitely into that thousand yard range, Folks, we gotta make sure that that gun is plumb, it is straight, it is level, and we're not introducing cant. You know, even when you're mounting your optic, folks, you have to make sure that that optic is mounted perfectly straight up and down and level, it's plumb, right? You may, gotta make sure there is no cant built into that mechanically. And the, the problem with this is a lot of people don't mount their optic correctly or while they're shooting, they're introducing cant and they're attributing these misses to wind and environmental issues when in reality it's a mechanical issue because anytime that we either can't our optic or we can't our gun, we're turning windage into elevation and vice versa. So you gotta make sure that obviously when you set your gun up, and I have a whole video I talk about all this, folks. You can go check that out. I explain this and, and talk about why it's so important to make sure that your optic is mounted correctly. So go check out that video so that you understand what we're talking about. But folks, it is real easy, even if you have your optic mounted correctly, you spent the time to set this gun up correctly to make sure that we're getting rid of as many variables as possible. As we're out there shooting, especially if you're not on perfectly level ground, it's easy to introduce cant. So you have got to have some sort of anti-cant device on that gun that you can reference and ensure that you're keeping that gun level throughout the firing process. Because you could have the exact right dope, Wind won't even be an issue. You're gonna get miss, miss. And folks, we see this all the time on our firing line. We run a long range school and we'll have students down there. I know the data that I give them, the elevation and windage, the dope that I gave them is good. And I hear pow, miss, pow, miss. I'm like, hey, double check your level. Make sure you're good and level. Next thing you know, pow, ping. Nothing changed other than they got that gun upright. And it's, again, it's something that you won't even realize you're doing. You'll feel, you feel like everything's perfectly level, but the gun's not. And so this is what this helps. Now, what I've used in the past, folks, is some sort of just analog level. Uh, here's an anti-can device made by US Optics. We have a bubble level that I can see as I'm shooting with my non-shooting eye. And then what I also like about this is the fact that it folds out of the way. And I've always used some sort of anti-can device. And again, folks, it's critical to make sure that the gun is zeroed using an anti-can device or your data is gonna start off bad to begin with. And then obviously all throughout that firing process, making sure that, so this is a critical piece of equipment. This to me is just as important as a good gun, a good optic, good mounts, all those things. And it's the one piece of equipment that people often don't think about or don't utilize and it's costing them time, money, wasted ammo, and a lot of frustration. So get some sort of anti-cant device. So I'll tell you right now, in the past, I've been very hesitant to use one of these electronic levels. And I'm sure for probably some of the same reasons that you guys are thinking about right now. Number one, I don't know how accurate this is. I don't know how reliable it is. I don't know how sensitive it is compared to you know this, this device down here. Well, I, I have some pretty interesting news for you because when it comes to the testing, and I'm gonna show you that testing, uh, this is definitely a superior product. The other issue that I had was I love the fact like these US optics, which we sell, we still sell on our website, they're great levels, is these fold out of the way. On this device, this particular one, the way this works, it sticks out off to the side. And I didn't like that, but guess what? There's some additional mounting options that can definitely greatly reduce the profile, which I'm gonna go over right now. So the first thing I think we need to talk about 
is making sure that this thing actually works like it's supposed to. And I'm gonna take you through that as well as some of the different options and cool features about this device. Got my handy dandy little overhead cam right here. I wanna take you through this, just unbox it. When you open this up, this is what you're gonna get. We got a piece of foam down there. We have a mounting screw, a hex head, and we have the device itself. So one of the things I love about this is the simplicity of it, folks. There's only one single control knob on here. This turns it on as well as controls brightness. Uh, right here is as dim as it gets. And it is, when you're actually looking at it, it is very dim. I have the, I got the ISO turned up here, so it looks brighter than it actually is. But as we turn this up, it gets as bright as you could possibly need it. So it is daylight bright. It's gonna do everything that you need it to do. And I will tell you, I would easily take this hunting or anything like that. It gets very dim. Maybe that's a little bit better representation. It gets very dim, but you can still see it. Uh, the only time that I wouldn't use this is if I was still operational and I'm running around in a tactical environment. You know, if someone had night vision devices, this would probably create a pretty big glow off your face. Um, but for the rest of us in a normal world, that's not something that we need to worry about. So one thing I was concerned about was leaving this thing on. Uh, folks, it's gonna happen. I know I'm gonna leave it on sometimes when I'm done shooting, and you are too. What's what's good is that, again, one knob, it's stupid proof, and this does go into sleep mode if it doesn't move for 10 minutes. So it's gonna greatly preserve your battery life. And as far as changing the battery on this, folks, it's super simple. We have a weatherproof design here. We have a gasket that goes all the way around, but we're just pulling this out of the tube. So if it's mounted on the gun, all you gotta do is, is give it a pull, and then this housing cover comes off. And then right here, right here we have our battery. So that's our battery right there. And we just pull that out, we switch it out. It's probably a good idea to keep a couple extra on hand. You know how that works. Your batteries are always dead when you don't want them to be. Now this requiring batteries is obviously a disadvantage when it comes to your standard levels. But I think there's some major advantages of this over that standard level that in my mind far outweigh uh, any disadvantage we have with batteries. I'm gonna keep a couple extra batteries on hand. That to me is not a big deal. And obviously if you're that concerned about this running out of batteries or malfunctioning out in the field, clearly you're doing some pretty critical stuff. So it's probably not a bad idea to have one of these extra analog levels either mounted to your gun or in a pack ready to go if you really need it. So those are some ways that we can overcome that particular disadvantage. But let's talk about the advantages of this over one of these. Now, if you look at this level right here, so the thing about these particular levels and most of the anti-cant device levels out there is the fact that if you get it in the mail, and I have, if you get one of these and it is not calibrated correctly, there's not a whole lot you can do. Uh, you can try sending it back, trying to exchange it. They may or may not be willing to do that. Uh, another thing that I've done in the past is I do determine what is level on that, putting the level on my gun or some other place, and then I'll figure out what that reading is on that particular one. That way, you know, I know that if, if, if for this gun, for this particular one, I'm not saying this one because this one's good, but, you know, I can find out, hey, you know what, right about there is where the gun is actually level. So you can get used to doing that and you can figure that out. That's not the best option, but the fact of the matter is you can't change that. Folks, with this, you can actually calibrate it. Uh, it comes calibrated from the factory. Every one that I've tested so far has calibrated and shown to be calibrated perfectly. Um, you can also adjust the sensitivity on this. Now, the other concern that I had was I didn't want something necessarily sticking out from my rifle. Uh, again, this is a rigid piece. I don't want this to get knocked, get broken, get bent up or anything like that. Well, guess what? We have some different mounts here that allow you to mount this in many different spots on your rifle, as well as many different orientations. So we will definitely cover that. All right, so let's talk about how accurate and how sensitive this device actually is. And this really impressed me. Uh, let me get your thoughts on it. And by the way, this is comes from the factory at sensitive level three. There's two more. It has five different sensitivity levels. You can look in the manual. It's real easy to change if you want to go up or down in sensitivity, uh, but super easy to change. So right here, I have the Short Action Customs scope mounting base, and it allows me to make sure that, there we go. We have a scope base that is perfectly level, and it's level there. If I put it up here, it's still level, all that good stuff. All right, so what I'm gonna do is actually mount this in your direction so that you can see what's going on here. And this really impressed me. So 
boom, right there. All right, so we can see that's indicating level, by the way. All right, so we can check right there. That's still level. And what I have here is an electronic angle finder. Uh, this thing is sensitive down to a tenth of a degree. So we're going to turn this on, and then I'm just going to make sure that it is calibrated. This is always a pain because you introduced. Okay, all right, so we now have that, and you're seeing what I'm seeing. Watch this, folks. We're gonna see, look at that. We let it settle back down to zero. We'll tip it the other way. We see it indicating on the LRA send it level far before we even see it indicate a tenth of a degree on that angle finder. So this thing is super sensitive. If it's too sensitive for you, you can, again, you can adjust that uh, sensitivity level. It has one through five, it's currently set on three, that's how it comes from the factory, but you can address that up and down. The other thing I just said, that if you get, if you get a bad analog level, folks, there's nothing you can really do. You can't, you can't calibrate those, most of those are not adjustable. This absolutely is. So number one, if for some reason you see that it is not uh, calibrated correctly, number one, you can fix it. And it's super easy to do in the instructions that show you how to do that. Number two, let's say you have, you're one of those guys that you like to shoot at an angle. I'm not a big fan of that, don't advocate that, but you want your gun slightly canted while you shoot. You can actually adjust this to show you when it is indeed exactly level. Folks, the other, probably the biggest advantage of this and why I would use this over an analog level all day long is because of those lights, folks. They grab your attention and they're forcing you to see what's going on. I can tell you, all of our student guns have one of those US optics levels and it's easy to fade off into the distance and be ignored. And we're shooting, we should be shooting with both eyes open. If you're a right-handed shooter, you should be looking through your optic with your right eye and then we're actually looking at the anti-cant device with our left eye. Uh, and it's easy to forget that, but when you have this thing blinking in front of you, especially for competition or even hunting, folks, we wanna make sure that thing is right there in a peripheral vision and we see that thing blinking and letting us know when it's okay to shoot. And as soon as it's on that green, that's when we know it's okay to shoot. And folks, the cool thing about this is when you turn this 90 degrees, and you guys can see that I'm got it slightly canted. All right, so we can mount this 90 degrees and it still does the exact same thing. As we start to introduce cant, it's gonna be just as sensitive and give us the same results. And there again, it's gonna be in our peripheral vision. We're gonna be able to see that and make sure that that thing is good to go. All right, so let's talk about some of the different mounting options that you have so that you can make sure that this is going to mount to your gun the way that you want it to. It's gonna fit how you're gonna set up overall. So this is the vertical mount and I'm gonna actually get ready to use this. I'll show you how to mount that uh, in just a second. And then what we have right here is the S90 bracket. This is also a 90 degree bracket. And what we have is a spur mount this gun is utilizing. This is specifically designed so that you can mount this vertically on a spur mount. So it's going to interface with the screw holes that are already, that come with the spur mounts. So just be aware of that. But that is a simple and easy thing to do. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. All right, folks, so I'm getting ready to take you through the mounting process. We're gonna use some of these accessory mounts and mount one of these on my rifle. But before that, if you like content like this, make sure you like, subscribe, throw a comment down below. That really helps us out. And folks, if you are a supporter of the Second Amendment or you believe in the First Amendment, stop watching YouTube. They're not a friend of us. They're not a friend of the Second Amendment. They're not a friend of the First Amendment. Go over to Rumble. Start watching Rumble. We have a channel over there. I'll link that down below. Go watch that. Um, now we are staying on YouTube so we can continue to bring people over. But again, if you like, subscribe, that gets our message out. Even though YouTube crushes us in our reach because we are a 2A content channel, you like and subscribing makes a huge difference and definitely go subscribe to our channel over on Rumble. Uh, also, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, we have our Dangerous Liberty podcast right here on YouTube and Rumble. Make sure you join us live. We talk about guns, gear, politics. We talk about, we have special guests on all the time. It's a great time. You get to interact with us, comment. 
You get to ask questions. It's a good time. So make sure you join us every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, and we'll see you there. All right, now that we got all the self-promotion stuff out of the way, let's get into this. All right, folks, so you can see where I currently have my anti-cant device mounted. Uh, this is essentially where I want to put that LRA electronic level as well but I don't know if it's gonna fit there and or I don't know that if the way that it's configured, if it's going to interfere with any controls, that's what those other accessory mounts are for. So we're gonna test that out. So here we have, and this is what it would look like if we mounted it just like this. That's what it would look like. And obviously you guys can see that, all right? That it's, it's sticking out there quite a ways. I'm not the biggest fan of that. So let's take a look at what this looks like if we put the vertical mount on that. So let's, all right, so here's the vertical mount that we're gonna be using, this is the extended one. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and disassemble this, make sure that you guys can see how I'm doing this, but we're just gonna remove that right there. All right, so with your electronic level, this actually comes in the box. I'm assuming that this Allen wrench is going to fit those. So let's go ahead and pull that out. So I'm just going to unscrew these. So look folks, you can see how that attaches. All right, and this goes right here. That's our thumb screw. Now, if you're left-handed, you're putting it on the other side. All right, we can just flip that around. It's gonna attach just like that. All right, so you can see right here, let me get some good light on it. We have some different mounting options, right? So we have all four of those, and then we have the large screw diameter in the middle. So that's all we're gonna use right here. Make sure that it's facing the right direction. And folks, I'm gonna tell you, so this is going on a gun. Anytime that anything's going on in the gun with fasteners, I'm putting some Vibratite on that. So let me grab that real quick. And folks, Vibratite is far superior for any sort of fastener, including scope, rings, whatever you're putting on a gun over Loctite. It stays tacky. I talk about it in all the videos, scope mounting videos and everything else. Uh, it just holds up to recoil. It doesn't break down. You can actually take this apart and refit it because this stuff stays soft and gooey. Uh, it just works better overall, but you can actually take this apart, put it back together, and it's still gonna have those thread locking properties compared to Loctite, which will not. It will break down. Stuff doesn't, I, I've been using this stuff for a long time. I haven't seen it break down over time either. I'm sure it does degrade to some extent, but there again, you can take this apart, put it back together, and you don't have an issue. So anytime a fastener is going on the gun, I'm putting a little bit of the Vibratite on there. It works really well. All right, so. Now I have that fitted. Um, I am not gonna go crazy with this. I probably put, I don't know, maybe 15 inch pounds of pressure on that. All right, so that's what it looks like right there. We got that reassembled. Now let's take a look at how it fits on the gun and if we have the clearances that we need to be able, still be able to see our controls and all that good stuff. And one thing I did mean to mention folks, look on this. So if you end up putting this underneath the scope or even like we're gonna put it on the rail right here, it does have some relief on the mount itself. So it will allow you to get in there. Even if you have a really low mounted optic, you might need to put mount this first and then you can mount that optic. Uh, obviously just do whichever you need to do to make sure that you have the clearances and everything just makes sense. Look at that. All right, so I'm just mounting that up. All right, folks, so now you can see what's going on here. And what I like about this is that I can still see exactly where my parallax is as well without coming off that. But folks, that's the thing. As you're sitting there and you got your, you're looking through that optic, you're not gonna forget about this, right? You are not gonna forget that that's there. And again, let's, let's just play around with getting this thing perfectly level. There we go, all right? So you're not gonna forget about that. And that is gonna be your reminder to make sure that you're making sure that before you pull the trigger, that you can see what's going on and it's going to let you know whether or not that gun is level or not. So that is critical and this is another reason why, that's probably the main reason, folks. It is so easy to forget about your anti-cant device and when that thing is blinking, you're not forgetting about it. You're gonna remember and you're gonna get in a good habit of seeing that green before you send it down range. So I, folks, I really believe that the overall benefits of this far outweigh any disadvantages that we have because it's battery ran. It's not a bad idea and you guys can see right here, 
I do have a backup on this. This is pretty accurate. It's definitely not as accurate as sensitive as that. So I love this thing. It is it is just a great piece of kit because I'm telling you folks, you are you are missing a lot, a lot more than you think because you don't keep that gun level. It is critical. And especially once you get out past six, seven, eight hundred yards, if that gun's not level, Folks, you're introducing cant and you're you're turning your windage into elevation and, and, and vice versa. And it's not a good thing. It results in misses. It's as simple as that. So that is a really cool piece of technology that is making shooters better. So folks, I can't state it enough, especially if you're a competitor or you plan to be, or I will even say hunters. <laughs> None of, none of you can afford to miss shots. None of us want to miss shots. We're just wasting expensive ammo, right? So, you know, put this on your gun. Don't leave home without it. I think it will make a huge difference. Uh, and, you know, so many people will spend so much time and money if they could increase their impacts by 5 10%. But I'm telling you folks, that little device will dramatically reduce your misses. It's as simple as that. It will make a bigger difference than you realize because nobody realizes their guns are canted and the other half don't realize that their optics are canted. So again, I got videos for all those things as well. Well, there it is folks, the MDT LRA electronic level. And folks, I hope that was helpful. I hope that was informative. I'm sure I left some things out. If there's anything that I didn't cover or you have questions, make sure you leave those down in the comments below. I'll try to address those. And seriously, if you plan on getting one of these, we'd really appreciate the business. So go to ParamountTactical.com. The only gear that we carry, folks, are items that we've personally tested and we believe in. We think that everything that we put on our website is directly tied to our credibility and our reputation. And so we are not going to put anything up there that we don't believe in, that we don't believe is the best option out there. So again, we really appreciate the business. We take the time to make these videos for you and you know in hopes that uh it will inform you will educate you but it also really helps us if you do business with us so we'd appreciate that and you know while guns and gear is great we're really about is training so make sure you go to paramounttactical.com go check out our upcoming training schedule we'd love to have you out we'd love to meet you in person we have long range courses tactical carbine handgun courses medical courses driving courses all of our instructors are required to have real world operational experience as well as professional instructional experience all of them have instructed or currently instruct for federal agencies and or the military. So we'd love to meet you. So come out and train with us. You'll be glad you did. I promise you that. All right, folks. Well, we appreciate you watching. But until next time, stay armed, stay ready. We'll talk to you soon.